As regular smartphones continue to get more and more difficult to get excited by, foldables seem to be the next big thing. Companies like Samsung, Huawei, and even Royal have already found success in the foldable industry, and the all-new Galaxy Z Fold 2 seeks to establish itself as the sole tenant of the ivory tower, the most premium and luxury smartphone money can buy. Z Fold 2 is officially the third-generation foldable phone from the company. Addressing the drawbacks of the original Fold, it is Samsung's testament and the proof of its commitment towards the future of smartphone design. If you recall, the first-generation Galaxy Fold was indeed groundbreaking, but it also had a dismissible cover display, flimsy unreliable hinge, and off-putting notched main display, all of which have been re-engineered for the better this time around. The most noticeable and evidently necessary improvement can be seen on the metal cover hinge. Called the hideaway hinge, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is incredibly sturdy. Using a cam mechanism, the phone can stay open on various angles, while being able to stand on its own between 75 and 115 degrees. Samsung makes use of this hinge's stability into a feature called Flex Mode, which is very appropriately named if you ask me. Under this, the large main display is divided into two separate but uniform areas, letting you use an app in a whole new way. Disappointingly, very few apps make use of the flex mode for now. Besides camera, other native apps like Calendar, Clock, Calculator, Gallery, Samsung Notes, and a handful of third-party apps like Google Duo and YouTube conform to the flex mode. Moving on, the hinge is fortified by small elastic brushes to prevent dust and other unwelcome particles from getting inside. As far as I can say, my unit of the Z Fold 2 does not seem to have let in any amount of dirt or other undesirable nanoparticles, but that is not 100% warranted considering how the Z Fold 2 lacks any kinds of ingress protection. At 282 grams, the Fold 2 is definitely not lightweight. Holding a phone like you would hold a tablet feels lavish and surprisingly futuristic. When you get to folding the device, there's a satisfying clack while the two plastic nubbins on the top and the bottom edge of the main display's bezel absorb the pressure of the fold and ensure the display's protection. Talking about folding the Fold 2, Samsung is yet to achieve a gapless hinge like on Motorola's new Razer 5G. Anyway, it is a thick boy and therefore obviously feels like you're holding two phones at once, or a bar of gold, however you like to describe it. Likewise, the Z Fold 2 has a metal frame, Gorilla Glass 6 back, whereas the cover display is reinforced by Gorilla Glass Victus. Despite all this, I cannot speak for the absolute durability of the Fold 2 because of all the intricate engineering inside. One swift drop and it could be game over for the Fold 2. Here, the right frame of the device houses the volume rockers and a side key that doubles as a fingerprint sensor too. The top and bottom left frame hold the stereo speaker setup which can get really loud plus a fair bit of details to enjoy. Okay, let's talk about the display now. And as I mentioned earlier, the biggest complaint about the original Fold was its unappealing cover display. At just 4.6 inches, getting things done on the go on it was an uninspiring journey. Well, Samsung has heard that complaint loud and clear, and therefore the Z Fold 2's cover display is a 6.2 inches edge to edge AMOLED screen that can pass as a usable regular smartphone display. From making calls, using navigational apps, and more, the cover display has got you covered. One handed typing is also a lot more comfortable on this screen, which is a direct reflection of its narrow aspect ratio. Technically, with its 2260 by 816 pixel count plus an aspect ratio of 25 is to 9, it is an HD Plus panel. But make no mistake, it is incredibly sharp, and I don't think I need to talk about the quality of a Samsung display here. When unfolded, you're greeted with a large 7.6 inches dynamic AMOLED display, enough to make a grown up geek out. Anyhow, this display uses Samsung's ultra thin glass layer that debuted on the Galaxy Z Flip. And Samsung has had to implement multiple layers of different materials to achieve foldability, usability, and durability of the screen. It goes AMOLED panel, UTG, protective layer, and a factory-applied screen protector. You can tell the difference between the physical quality of the cover and the display right away as this one feels much more plasticky. But I have to say that over time, I got pretty used to it. 
Moreover, the camera bezel on the first fold is now replaced with a minimalistic punch hole cutout. It houses a 10 megapixel selfie camera just like the one on the cover display. And I'm guessing it's to maintain symmetry between the two screens, these identical camera sensors are placed in an alignment. But I think Samsung could have done a better job at this because the diameter of the cutout on the main display is relatively larger than the one on the front. Moving on, the Z Fold 2's vivid 7.6 inch screen also enjoys up to 120Hz of adaptive refresh rate. Using an LTPO black pane, the screen automatically switches between 11Hz and all the way up to 120Hz depending on the content. Now, allow me to address the elephant in the room, the crease. Yes, it's there and yes, it could be distracting. But hold on, the crease sort of just disappears when looking at it upright with the device unfolded to 180 degrees. Even when interacting with the bright background, I could not notice it. Anyway, besides using regular apps, playing games on the Z Fold 2's big screen is an awesome experience. But because of its unusual form factor, most games haven't been optimized properly and one could notice the loss in graphics quality if you really look for it. Here in PUBG Mobile, even with the highest graphics settings turned on, the rendering of the textures look way too jaggy, which is unnatural considering the phone's top of the line silicon. That being said, you can crank up to their max settings without any hiccup and the larger screen real estate makes all the difference in your gameplay. Likewise, Z Fold 2 does not heat up that bad either. And just like on the covered display, watching videos on the big main display is also greeted with a giant letterbox. Interestingly, selecting the see more content at the same time option under the display settings gives a more or less tablet-like viewing experience. I actually prefer this option even though Samsung disables it by default. Now, this does not work with all the apps, but where it does, it's a game changer. For instance, apps like Gmail, MyFiles, YouTube, etc. can get a lot more productive under this. Talking of productivity, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 also lets you do more at once on this big screen. You can simultaneously use up to three apps on the main screen and easily switch between them as you see fit as well. What's more is that you can even group the ones you frequently use into a shortcut and launch them all at once from the Edge panel. App continuity is another impressive feature on the Z Fold 2. With this, apps seamlessly stay open on the cover screen when folding the phone. Once again, not all apps are privy to this luxury though. On the reverse, transferring apps from the cover to the main display is also half-baked and did not work as nice in some games I tried. Besides this, practically every app I used on my regular phone worked perfectly fine on the Z Fold 2's main display. Apps don't crash or misbehave on its new foldable form factor with a typical 22.5 is to 18 aspect ratio which is a relief. Powered by the flagship Snapdragon 865 Plus, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is an absolute beast of a performer as well. With 12GB of high-speed LPDDR5 RAM and 256GB of UFS 3.1 storage on board, everything is as smooth as smooth can get. Thankfully, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 ships with the 5G-ready Snapdragon 865 Plus wherever available and there is no Exynos variant. Maybe that's a production limitation too, seeing how niche of a product it is. Because of all this, everything works as perfectly fine as you'd expect from a flagship smartphone. Okay, moving on to the cameras, as I mentioned earlier, the Z Fold 2 has a couple of 10 megapixel selfie shooters on the cover and on the main display. Similarly, you can find a trio of 12 megapixel lenses at the back, one for wide angle, one for ultra wide angle, and one for the telephoto shots. Right off the bat, this is not Samsung's most impressive camera setup on a phone. That crown goes to the Note 20 Ultra for now. From 8K recording to 50x hybrid zoom, such headlining features have been dropped on the Fold 2. In its own right, the images from its cameras are adequately fine, don't get me wrong. But it's just that they are pale in comparison to Samsung's other flagship phones. Here you can shoot stabilized videos up to 4K 60fps and its telephoto lens does have a modest 2x optical and 10x digital zoom. Images from the primary sensor have plenty of details and dynamic range is fine as well. Wide-angle shots share the same story, but the colors do tend to look extra punchy and vibrant. Selfies from either of the 10 megapixel sensor look nice too, although there is a slight reddish tint on the subject. However, you can take selfies from the objectively superior rear camera setup whose images don't have that same red tint. 
Furthermore, the Z Fold 2's cover display can also be fashioned into a live preview screen where you can show the subject how the photo or video is turning out. There is also this video recording feature called auto framing where the camera adjusts the focus and zoom depending on the number of human subjects in the frame. Getting to the battery now, Samsung has managed to include a decent 4500 mAh cell on the Fold 2. With the adaptive refresh rate turned on and using the main display for 90% of the time, I managed to net out a day's battery life almost every day, which converts to some 5-6 to six hours of screen on time. Juicing up the phone is fairly fast as it supports 25W wired as well as 11W wireless charging. All in all, you've got to admit that the Z Fold 2 is the face of the future of smartphone designs. Being able to unfold a phone into a mini tablet is truly remarkable and Samsung's efforts to make the phone feel as natural as possible is commendable. Having said that, there are still a lot of factors that go against the Z Fold 2 to consider it as a viable product and not just as an item of luxury. No matter how you spin it, 2 grand is still an insane amount of money for a smartphone and you guessed it, it is definitely not worth purchasing for mainstream audiences. From its bulky design to the relative delicacy, it is hard to recommend this phone to anyone but an enthusiast. Still, if you want to buy the most lavish and futuristic smartphone money can buy, it does not get better than the Z Fold 2, at least for now. So that was all about the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Uh, do subscribe to our channel to watch more of such videos. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in the next one.